everyone, I'm Forum BX257, your friendly neighborhood G.I. Joe tour reviewer, and today I'm going to be talking all about Tiger Force, the G.I. Joe subline which started in 1988. Now for North American viewers who remember Tiger Force, they're probably thinking, well, what are those extra years doing in the title? Well, in North America, and I'm just going to combine the United States and Canada because they ran concurrently, it ran from 1988 to 1989 only. But Tiger Force was really popular in Brazil as well as the UK and Europe, and it ran all the way up into 1991. So let's get to it. Starting with the single card figures first released in 1988 for all of North America, there were seven of them. Which is an odd number considering six is the usual sub team release number, but more on that later. First is Tiger Force Duke. Duke reuses most of the 1983-84 mold for both figure and accessories, with the exception of his arms and waist, which are originally from a 1988 hit and run and the 1983 Cobra Soldier and Officer. The parts replaced are shared with the 1983-84 Doc, whose parts were never used again, leading to speculation that the Doc figure mold was damaged or lost. Interesting that Duke's Tiger Force recolor includes brown hair when he is famously known as a blonde. They didn't even bother to change the hair color on the artwork. Duke's file card has numerous changes to the original, including a new serial number, wisely removing all the dates, and adding a Tiger Force reference. When assembling this figure on the aftermarket, make sure his binoculars are the same deep dark grey like his gun, and not jet black like the 1983-84 original. Here's a fun factoid. This is the same binoculars used for the very, very brief Mail Away Steeler in 1989, which replaced that figure's helmet mounted binoculars. Tiger Force Duke's backpack is becoming harder to find as collectors use it in place of a Steel Brigade one, even though they are a slightly different shade. He is one of the two more expensive North American released Tiger Force figures due to his character popularity, even though he is not a hard figure to find complete. Next is Tiger Force Flint. Flint reuses the 1985 figure and accessory mold. Note, the Tiger Force card art has him wearing a scarf that the original artwork didn't have. Clearly at some point the figure would have had orange chest paint instead of the flesh tone, and the card art was changed to explain why. I'm not sure why Hasbro didn't choose to put the orange paint there, as it would have added consistency with the other Tiger Force figures that have this pop of color, like Duke, Sky Striker, and Dusty. Tiger Force Flint's file card has very few changes from the original, but corrects his pay grade, which should be abbreviated as W03, but this is still a minor win. Tiger Force Flint is the easiest figure to find complete on the aftermarket, but isn't as expensive as others despite his character's popularity. Next is Tiger Force Bazooka. Bazooka reuses the 1985 figure and accessory molds. Unlike the 1985 original, there have been no reports of weapon variations, thank goodness. Since the original figure's distinctive shirt was based on the real-world New England Patriots football uniform, I tried to check if the Tiger Force version was based on anything. Although the Louisiana State University football team is the most famous team to be called Tigers, Bazooka's uniform looks more like the Clemson Athletics of South Carolina Tigers uniform, although I'm pretty sure it's accidental. Tiger Force Bazooka's file card has some interesting changes, including expanding his expertise with missiles and adding some cross-sell for the Tiger Force Tiger Shark boat. Despite not being the most popular character, he is still an expensive find on the aftermarket due to the missile tips on his backpack cracking off easily and paint wear on his chest. Next is Tiger Force Dusty. Dusty reuses the 1985 figure and accessory molds. On the Tiger Force card, you can see they forgot to remove the desert camo from his face or decided not to add it to the figure. I'm not sure why a desert combat expert is wearing dark green tiger stripe jungle camo, but you've got to admit, it does look awesome. Dusty's file card is mostly unchanged from the original, only adding references to Tiger Force and a cross sell for the Tiger Force Tiger Paw ATV. Tiger Force Dusty makes a really cool jungle soldier if you ignore his specialty, but that's not the only reason he's the most expensive North American released Tiger Force figure along with Duke. 
like the 1985 original, he comes with a tiny, easily lost bipod for his rifle, and the figure is prone to cracking his crotch piece off. Ouch. Next is Tiger Force Lifeline. Lifeline reuses the 1986 figure at accessory molds. If you thought the original's red and white was garish on the battlefield, his new yellow tiger stripe shirt isn't any better, despite the subdued green and brown elsewhere on him. Lifeline's file card has some interesting changes from the original, including his title, Medic, where the original was Rescue Trooper. He now has a secondary specialty of X-Ray Tech, where the original had none, and the obligatory Tiger Force references. Lifeline isn't the most expensive Tiger Force figure, but he is hard to find complete with all of his many accessories, and most importantly, undamaged. Like Dusty, he is prone to the crotch piece cracking off. Next is Tiger Force Roadblock. Roadblock reuses the 1984 figure and accessory molds. Kind of odd they didn't reuse the newer 1986 version. Unlike any of the other figures, he gets a painted accessory, a bright yellow tiger striped helmet. I think it looks really great on him when used as a co-pilot to the Tiger Rat Jet or Tiger Fly Helicopter. Tiger Force Roadblock's file card is mostly the same as the 1984 and 1986 versions, but has some interesting changes. He gets a new serial number, his pay grade is one higher, meaning he is a sergeant now, not a corporal, and some Tiger Force references with the expansion of personal information. Roadblock is easy to find complete on the aftermarket, but beware of the backpack peg meant to hold on his tripod. It breaks off just as easily as the 1984 original. And finally, we have Tiger Force Tripwire. Tripwire reuses the 1983 figure and accessory molds. Despite having one of the most garish recolors, his head is actually the same color as the original. You can swap the 1983 version for the Tiger Force one and consider it an upgrade, as the newer paint is thicker and less likely the nose paint will rub off. Tiger Force Tripwire's file card is mostly the same as the original, but with an expansion of personal information, including how he got his nickname. His serial number has been changed, and the secondary specialty changed to cross-sell the Tiger Force Tiger Fly helicopter. Tiger Force Tripwire is the second easiest figure to find and complete on the aftermarket, and his value usually reflects that. Before I get into the vehicles and driver figures, we need to address the wonky release of the figures first. This is how Hasbro originally intended to release the first six members of Tiger Force. Duke, Dusty, Lifeline, Rakondo, Ripcord, and Sabretooth. While Duke, Dusty, Lifeline, and Rakondo, albeit as a driver, not on an individual card, were released, Ripcord and brand new Sabretooth were not. It's not really known why there was such a drastic change in the roster. Ripcord still appears as a member of Tiger Force in the vintage Marvel comic G.I. Joe Special Missions number 25. As for Sabretooth, he would have reused the molds from a 1984 Firefly. Hasbro made and renamed him Wreckage in the 2003 Tiger Force set after collectors clamored for him after discovering information on this cool variant of their beloved Cobra Saboteur. The initial photos come from the 1988 Hasbro Toy Fair catalogs not normally available to the public. However, this information was finally released in the 1993 G.I. Joe Collector's Book, made using unedited Hasbro records and available in the 1993 Collector's Kit mail-away offer. There, it reveals what would have been a second series of four figures in 1989, consisting of Flint, Tripwire, Roadblock, and Bazooka. Why did the entire second series get released in place of the three missing figures in the first series? That question may never be answered. Unlike the figures, the vehicles were released in their proper schedule. Five in 1988 and two more in 1989. Good on Hasbro to inform toy buyers that some of them were captured Cobra vehicles, instead of just assuming we forget where the designs originated from. In my opinion, the vehicles are the real stars of this subseries. With very uniform designs to one another, the paint fade of white to brown to the yellow plastic with contrasting black tiger stripes is very memorable. A look very much like the NATO Air Combat War Games Tiger Meat livery seen on Canadian Forces entries as well as other countries. Speaking of Canada, the only difference between the two North American releases would be the extra French language on the Canadian boxes and the different country stickers on the vehicles. Starting with the first five 1988 releases, the Tiger Force Tiger Cat and Frostbite. A reuse of the 1985 G.I. Joe Snowcat and Driver Frostbite, this medium-sized vehicle is quite easy to find on the aftermarket, but suffers from the same problem that the original had, 
The rear missile box is held on the swiveling bar with thin claw clips which crack easily. While popular, it isn't quite as valuable as the other vehicles in the line. Like the vehicle, Frostbite uses the 1985 mold and includes his rifle, which is black plastic and indistinguishable from the original. His file card has some odd additions, like an emphasis on desert fighting. It references Toxo Vipers, a new figure for that year, but a strange cross-sell. It mentions the gun batteries that the missile and torpedo laden vehicle doesn't have at all. Next is the Tiger Force Tiger Fly and Pilot Rakondo, a reuse of the 1983 G.I. Joe Dragonfly helicopter. This large toy is the second most valuable in this subline on the aftermarket. Like the Dragonfly, it is a sturdy toy that, despite a lot of removable parts, is quite easy to find complete. Unlike the Dragonfly, it doesn't come with Pilot Wild Bill, but instead substitutes a reuse of the 1984 Rakondo and his accessories. Be careful, Rikondo's thumbs have a tendency to break off. With the exception of the name and birthplace, his file card is basically all new, even the serial number, neither reflecting Rikondo nor Wild Bill. In the 1988 Toy Fair catalog, you can barely see a Tiger Force colored Wild Bill and mentions him as the pilot. The Rikondo in the same catalog, originally slated as a single card release, has a completely different color scheme. As it turns out, the Wild Bill molds were being used elsewhere, ultimately ending up with Fun School of India in the early 1990s, and Rakondo was substituted just because of the similar hat. Next is the Tiger Force Tiger Paw, a small ATV based on the 1985 Cobra Ferret mold. This had no specific Tiger Force driver. Very popular with collectors, it is also very easily found complete and unbroken. Like the Cobra original, it makes for a great army builder. Next is the Tiger Force Tiger Rat and Pilot Sky Striker, a reuse of the 1984 Cobra Rattler. This large, complex jet has all the same features and problems as the original. Many removable parts, like the swappable battle damage panels and 14 missiles, and suffers from easily broken landing gear. In 2008, Target Stores released an exclusive Tiger Rat which is near identical to the original, save the updated copyright information stamped on the bottom. This newer toy came with a modern sculpt Wild Bill for some odd reason. Speaking of the pilot, that is the main reason the original toy is still the most valuable Tiger Force vehicle on the aftermarket, despite the easily found 2008 version. Sky Striker, not to be confused with the iconic 1983 Sky Striker XP-14F jet, is an all-new character made from the body molds of a 1984 Wild Weasel with the head and helmet of a 1984 Thunder. The three-piece helmet is very tough to find complete on the aftermarket, driving the value of the figure up, and in turn a complete Tiger Rat. His file card is similarly all new with references to X-30s, the G.I. Joe's unique conquest jets, and Cobra Mamba helicopters. As a lieutenant colonel, he is the highest ranked character in the Tiger Force subteam, but as a special forces unit, rank doesn't translate to command. You'll notice that the file card artwork uses a modified skid mark head from the 1988 Desert Fox six-wheel drive box art instead of something closer to Sky Striker's distinctive helmet. The final 1988 vehicle is the Tiger Force Tiger Shark, a medium boat that didn't come with an included driver based on the molds of the 1984 Cobra Water Moccasin. It has all the same issues the original had, fragile rudder link bar, and often missing canopy and torpedo. Still, it looked great in Tiger Force livery and the aftermarket value reflects its high popularity. The box artwork is very odd as it's the only one in the series with non-Tiger Force characters riding along. Spearhead and Muskrat, a possible 1988 cross-sell, I guess? The artwork for the fan mechanism is also strange with the shroud being the wrong color to the toy and the rudder link bar being upside down versus the original 1984 artwork. If you look at the 1988 Toy Fair catalog, you can just barely see a unique driver in it, despite the text not mentioning one. This is an orange painted 1983 G.I. Joe torpedo, and no one seems to know whether he is just a placeholder for photography purposes, or a Tiger Force character cancelled even before the pre-production stage. But it is suspicious that a vehicle of this size didn't come with an included driver. 
These final two vehicles were released in 1989, starting with the Tiger Force Tiger Fish, a small boat that didn't come with a driver based on the 1986 G.I. Joe Devilfish. It seems harder to find complete on the aftermarket, possibly due to the combination of collectors army building these things and the fact that the second series of vehicles weren't produced in the same quantities as the first series. The four small missiles and the two engine covers are very hard to find with loose examples. The final vehicle released in North America is the Tiger Force Tiger Sting, a medium Jeep that didn't come with a driver included and is based on the 1984 G.I. Joe Vamp Mark II, uh, sort of. The toy has a distinctive rear missile box, brush bar with lights, roof and door panels, but the rest of the vehicle is actually based on the 1982 Vamp. The box artwork shows a 1984 Vamp Mark II with its plug-in rear water cans and shovel mold on the fender that the 1982 Vamp and this toy doesn't have. Also, the artwork incorrectly shows red wheels and a yellow brush bar. A very popular vehicle among collectors and the easily lost steering wheel and gas cans really drive up the value, pun intended. Interesting that it's called the Tiger Sting as the Tiger Cat, Tiger Fly, Tiger Rat, and Tiger Fish had names reflective of their original vehicles. This has led many collectors to believe that 1984 Cobra Stinger was originally going to be used here, and they explain why the Tiger Sting is such an odd mix of parts which may have been necessary if assembled in a hurry. Tiger Force was quite popular abroad as well. UK, Europe, Brazil, Mexico, and China had some unique offerings mixed in with the normal releases. Starting with the UK and European releases, the first six figures released in 1990 were Duke, Lifeline, Tripwire, Roadblock, Psych Out, and Outback. As far as I can tell, Duke, Lifeline, Tripwire, and Roadblock were exactly the same as the North American releases. Unique to the UK and Europe, Tiger Force Psych Out is a reuse of the 1987 Psych Out figure and accessory mold. While the figure has a unique Tiger color scheme, the accessories appear to be the same as the 1987 originals. This is probably the most common exclusive figure to find, at least in its native land, and doesn't command as much as the others on the aftermarket. Tiger Force Outback was exclusive to the UK, Europe, and Brazil, but more on that later, and has a reuse of the 1987 Outback figure and accessory mold. Very distinctive with his Tiger Face t-shirt, Outback is very popular among collectors and commands a high value. The web belt and backpack accessories are darker brown than the original and his hip-mounted flashlight is often missing. The second series in 1991 added four all-new Tiger Force figures, Blizzard, Hitch and Run, Tunnel Rat, and Sneak Peek. Starting with Tiger Force Blizzard, he's a reuse of the 1988 Blizzard figure and accessory molds. He is an odd choice for a jungle and or desert sub-team, but is the hardest figure to find complete and commands the highest aftermarket value, at least currently. His backpack with handles, crampons, and skis are the same black plastic as the common originals, but the helmet and two firearms were uniquely yellow. Next is the Tiger Force Hit and Run. He is a reuse of the 1988 Hit and Run figure and accessories. Like Psych Out, the figure is done in distinctive tiger colors, but the accessories appear to be exactly the same as the originals. Due to the popularity of this character, he has a high aftermarket value, despite how easy it is to find and complete him. Next is Tiger Force Tunnel Rat. He is a reuse of the 1987 Tunnel Rat figure and accessory molds. Again, like Psych Out, the figure has only tiger-inspired colors. The accessories appear to be the same as the 1987 originals. Interesting that this figure has a deep red shirt, similar to the 1990 Sonic Fighters Tunnel Rats maroon shirt. The final UK and Europe exclusive figure is Tiger Force Sneak Peek, based on the 1987 Sneak Peek figure and accessories, save one piece. Tiger Force Sneak Peek's radio and plug-in microphone is the same black plastic as the original, but his three-piece periscope is a unique dark grey. Oddly enough, his original rifle has been replaced with a 1989 Night Viper shotgun. I don't have an explanation as to why that substitution, but they're both black and have similar shoulder straps. 1989 was the year UK and Europe transitioned from calling the line Action Force to G.I. Joe. So you will find Tiger Force cards and boxes titled as either Action Force, G.I. Joe the Action Force, or just plain G.I. Joe. Only the Action Force titled box art seems to have variations, like this Tiger Paw written by UK exclusive Psych Out and Outback, but later G.I. Joe title boxes revert to the US standard artwork. 
Six of the seven Tiger Force vehicles were released in the UK and Europe. The Tiger Rat wasn't released there to my knowledge, and all but one of the vehicles appears exactly the same as North American releases. The UK and Europe version of the Tiger Sting was noticeably different from the North American release, being a straight up reuse of the 1984 Vamp Mark II, meaning this variant has the proper hood mounted bundle, still missing on the box art, plug-in rear water cans, and fender molded shovel that the 1989 version does not have. In Brazil, Tiger Force figures were released in two series, plus a random single figure released later by Estrella. The first series released in 1989 consists of three unique figures, Airtight, Shipwreck, and Dusty. Tiger Force Airtight is a reuse of the 1985 Airtight figure and accessories. Of all the Tiger Force recolors, this is the one that is closest to the original, with the green swapped out for brown. The accessories are also the same as the original, except for the backpack which is now jet black plastic. Tiger Force Shipwreck is a reuse of the 1985 Shipwreck mold, but with different accessories. This figure comes with a rifle and missile launcher from the 1985 Footloose figure. Considering the North American line had two boats, I'm surprised there wasn't a waterborne member like Shipwreck made before this. Tiger Force Dusty is a reuse of the 1985 Dusty figure and accessories, but differs from the 1988 North American Tiger Force Dusty. Brazilian Tiger Force Dusty has dark green pants and a backpack matching the shirt, versus the lighter green of the original. Brazilian Tiger Force Dusty also doesn't have the cloth havelock normally attached to his helmet. The second series of Tiger Force figures from 1990 consists of only two figures, Duke and Lifeline. While the Brazilian version of Tiger Force Lifeline looks very much like the 1988 North American version, the Tiger Force Duke once again has arms and a waist that are different. This version uses a 1984 ripcord arms and a 1986 Lifeline waist. His accessories are similar to the 1988 North American release, except for the rifle, which is now a 1987 Crazy Legs rifle without the folding stock. I'm not sure why they swapped it. One year after the official end of the Tiger Force subline in Brazil, a Sonic Fighters Outback is released in the same Tiger Force colors as the UK and European exclusive version. As you can see from the packaging, there is no Tiger Force marking, making this an unofficial addition to the team. The figure is distinguishable from the UK and Europe variant by the darker green pants and the fact that the accessories are completely different. This figure came with accessories typical to the Sonic Fighters line. An electronic backpack, a black version of the 1990 Sonic Fighters Dodgers backpack minus the antenna, and four rifles, three of which are also from the 1990 Sonic Fighters Dodger and one from a 1990 Sonic Fighters Tunnel Rat. My information on Brazilian Tiger Force vehicles is spotty at best, but from what I can gather, only four vehicles were released for the line. However, if you know different, please comment below. The four I found reference to were the Tiger Fly, Tiger Rat, Tiger Cat, and Tiger Fish. None of these vehicles appear to include drivers. For the Mexican Tiger Force releases by Oricon, I couldn't find any individual carded figures, only vehicles. My research only turned up four. The Tiger Paw, which included a complete lifeline. The Tiger Shark, which included a complete dupe the Tiger Cat with Frostbite, and the Tiger Rat with Sky Striker. It was quite surprising to find out the Mexican releases of the Tiger Paw and Tiger Shark came with drivers when the originals didn't. Detailed information is hard to find on Mexican releases in general, so I couldn't tell if there were any differences compared to the North American releases. While there were no official Tiger Force releases for the domestic Chinese market, in the early 1990s, China released two figures in Tiger Force colors and one with Tiger Force package art for their main line. The Chinese Tiger Force roadblock was exactly the same as the original, obviously as they were both made in the same factory. However, they planned to do a Tiger Force flint, but didn't have any of the molds. So they cobbled together the head of a 1987 or 1991 Falcon the arms of a 1987 or 1990 Tunnel Rat, and the body, waist, and legs of a 1991 Dusty. He came with 1991 Dusty's backpack in a darker brown than the original, and a 1992 Headhunter shotgun. Most collectors consider this a Tiger Force Falcon. 
The other figure is the infamous Chinese Duke with his arms and waist modified like the 1988 Tiger Force version, but in original 1983-84 colors. This is the figure most often mistaken for the very rare Japanese long sleeve version of Duke. The Chinese Duke simply isn't hard to find, but you will notice he comes on a card that uses the 1988 Tiger Force artwork. I could only find two Chinese market Tiger Force vehicles, the Tiger Sting and the Tiger Fly, also unmarked as a separate series. In 1999, Fun School of India released what I consider the final truly vintage Tiger Force figure ever made. While it is part of their main line of single card figures, the file card does mention Tiger Force. Uh, well, I mean, since it's a copy of the 1988 original, I don't know of any collector who actually wants these. It almost looks like a bootleg. And because I can't close out this video with that horrible clown version of Tiger Force Lifeline, here is some vintage Tiger Force licensed merchandise. Enjoy!